A big thank you comes to you today from Dead Rabbit via Patreon for his long support of the channel. Lathril versus Kestia, Manor Nora and Tetsuko. A three lander for us with some ramp and a means of buffing our commander as well, a pretty perfect hand for us. Tetsuko casts Ponder, Nykthos for the rat player, and the bant player cracks a Terramorphic Expanse. And we draw into a Shaman of the pack, so we play out the Draga Tree Speaker this turn. Looks like Tetsuko is bringing us a Persistent Petitioner's deck. The rat player gets down Piper of the Swarm, and then it is a Jukai Naturalist. It's the Great Henge for us, so we will get on with our ramp, play out a forest, and level this up to level 1. And then this will tap for mana straight away, so not usually the case, but we can actually make use of that mana straight away by getting down a Sword of the Animist. Another Petitioners for the Mono Blue player. Then we see the first rat from the Maronora, Relentless Rats. And the Enchantress player getting down the first Enchantress, that is Eidolon of Blossoms. So staying at 6 cards in hand. An Ancient Tomb for us, so not sure we can get down a 3 drop as well as our commander. But if we play the Ancient Tomb, what we can do is play our commander and equip it with the Sword of the Animist. So we'll do that here. The blue player going down to three cards in hand, but does have four Persistent Petitioners out now. It is noteworthy that they can only target one player with this, but instead of doing this during the end of our turn, you would think they would do it. They just do it straight away during their main phase, and they do target us with that. So losing a Stoneforge Masterwork would have been nice to draw into that next turn. A Poison Tip Archer, some lands, Evolutionary Leap, Deathrite Shaman, Swiftfoot Boots, Wood Elves, Viridian Zealot, and the Lisa Lana Huntmaster. We do at least have a free run through to the blue player now though. Okay, unfortunately our commander being dealt with a Wither Crown. The Enchanted Creature has base power zero, and at the beginning of your upkeep you lose one life unless you sacrifice this creature. So... Uh, Maybe worth getting down the Timber Watch Elf pretty quickly. We'll at least be able to make one Elf token next turn because we do still have one power thanks to the Sword of the Animist. And there we see another Enchantress, so we'll see how long it takes our opponents to stop worrying about us and start looking over at the Enchantress player. Lathril is a scary commander, but Bant Enchantress is nothing to ignore either. That Enchantress spell cantrips to the Eidolon of Blossoms. And after that we see a Lightning Greaves. And that goes on to the Jukai Naturalist. As opposed to the Eidolon of Blossoms. So we're obviously going to lose one life to the Lathril here. Not really looking to sacrifice that anytime soon. Unless we can start making a real surplus of mana. Alright, and there is an Arbor Elf for us. Which I don't think we're going to be able to get down this turn. Because I'm looking at the Great Henge at the moment. Although that was during the last turn, before we got our Lathriel debuffed, wasn't it? I think we could have got down the Great Henge and the Timberwatch Elf if it wasn't for this enchantment, so... Yeah, Arbor Elf it is then, I suppose. So we'll throw down the Timberwatch Elf, ready to start buffing our commander. And we'll go through to combat before anything else, because... I don't want my opponent to do anything to Lathriel in the meantime. Swing over at the mono blue player, who I dare say is just going to keep pointing mill in our direction. Sword of the Animus going to trigger. It is noteworthy that the mono black player keeps holding up priority. So we managed to deal one point of commander damage to the blue player and get ourselves the elf token. Let's end the turn by getting down a tap land and the arbor elf. I don't want to play into a board wipe too much until we get down the great henge. Because, yeah, being able to cantrip our creatures from now on would be really useful. So we'll have to concentrate on getting that into play next turn, I think. So another Petitioners from the blue player. And once again doing it during their main phase, so we're going to Millers for a total of 24. So we've now got 63 cards left in the library. Seeing this time Essence Warden, Parallel Lives, Toski, Thousand Year Elixir, Elvish Warmaster, Rex Age, Prowess of the Fair, and Elvish Dreadlord as well as some lands. See another commander enter play now, Maro Nora is the second one. Now seeing from the Bant player, Karametra, God of Harvests, they will draw two cards to that. And the Karametra is animated thanks to Devotion of Seven, so putting a Lightning Greaves on there. And it's noteworthy, we have lost both of our Life Gain Elves, so we do have a reanimation uh, spell in the deck, but 
obviously can't be guaranteed that we'll draw into that so not sure if I'll block here or not well they decide not to swing in anyway so we'll take advantage and get down a shock land at the end of the turn okay drawing into a land now so should be able to get down our commander again easily enough I'm going to go for the timber watch elf now onto the lathril if we can buff its power which we want to do this turn anyway then it will make it easier to play out the great henge and we do successfully manage to do that so it's just three mana for the great henge and we'll attempt to get through the blue player with our lathril and make some tokens here could be that the blue player has some spot removal for us because mono blue gets spot removal now for some reason sword of the animus grabs us another forest okay we do manage to land that so make six elf tokens we can surprise our opponent with an elvish champion next turn i think so yeah pretty sure it can just be the shaman of the pack here uh, noteworthy we could dredge out or encore out the elvish dreadlord as well suppose this would be a pretty intelligent play actually i didn't attack my opponents for some extra damage here but i don't think we would have dealt much damage anyway maybe three more to uh, the black player yeah let's encore this so we get these into play they're going to be sacrificed at the end of the turn they are tokens so they don't trigger the great henge and i'd like more elves in play anyway when the shaman of the pack comes into play so yeah i think this pans out quite nicely so I'll go straight through to the end step and we'll get this one-sided board wipe so at minus nine minus nine to all non-elves unfortunately Karametra is deanimated when those two creatures die so would have been able to get rid of this but it does get deanimated between the resolution of the triggers actually totally forgot to level up the Jiraga tree speaker there as well unfortunately which could be relevant with all these elf tokens in play so the mono blue player decides to scoop I mean we didn't have much of a choice he was targeting us with that and he did actually set us up with the elvish dreadlord so wouldn't have necessarily made a play like that but like I said didn't have much choice against that player another relentless rats for the black player now it's time to see if the enchantress player has an answer for our commander or the great henge okay forcing my opponent to use a board wipe there winds of wrath so all creatures that aren't enchanted are destroyed and can't be regenerated. Our commander is enchanted, which is noteworthy, but we are going to lose our means of buffing our commander with the Timberwatch Elf, so yeah, we'll have to try and find a means of buffing our commander again with these creatures. They will cantrip to the Great Henge, of course. Okay, a woodland cemetery for us, so I think we're okay to get down the Elvish Champion here because... We want to make even more tokens with the Lathril. So that manages to hit play. It's a plus counter on the Lord. And we do draw. And there we see another Lord in Leaf Crowned Visionary. And that is whenever we cast an Elf spell, we can pay green to draw a card. So yeah, I think that's okay to get down here. Now I tap down the uh, Ancient Tomb because I assumed that I would be putting that mana into Shaman of the Pack. We might still be able to put the mana into another Elf here depending on what we draw into. Okay, an Allosaurus Shepherd, perhaps not. Maybe just get down the Allosaurus Shepherd here and try and cantrip into something to make use of that mana with. So we'll draw a card to the Leaf Crown Visionary by paying a green into that. And the Bant player has decided to scoop because he's really worried about the fact that we've got an Elvish Champion in play, I imagine. This does give us Forest Walk, so we'll be unblockable against the Bant player. Very surprised to see a Bant Enchantress player scooping so easily. Alright, so drawing into Marwin the Nurturer is good. Let's throw down the Twilight Mire. And then we can play Marwin the Nurturer with that floating colourless mana. Doing a lot of things during the uh, main phase here, but doesn't really matter. We're getting card draw at least. And that draws us into Primal Surge, which we do have to be careful with. We've only got, I think it's a total of four instants and sorceries in the deck. And then if we've got the Great Henge in play as well, it can be a nombo because we get a load of creatures into play, which will cantrip the, or which will trigger the Great Henge, and then we can end up decking ourselves if we get far enough down in the deck with this thing. But I didn't want Primal Surge to just be pay 10 mana and win the game because you get Haste and Crater Hoof into play straight away. I did want there to be a little bit of uh, potential downside and randomness to it. Anyway, drawing into another forest as well, so... Appreciate my rat opponent here playing it out, but we'll have to get another game after this, I think, anyway. 
So swinging in at our opponent triggers the Sword of the Animist again, which has gained us three mana so far, I think it is. Managing to hit with Lathriel, we have buffed our commander thanks to the Anthems, we've buffed it up by two power, so we get some more Elf Warriors into play. These are three threes with Forest Walk, and they do trigger the Marwyn, so this is going to tap for a lot of mana next turn. Our opponent just drops a Relentless Rats, so they really needed a board wipe there in order to stand a chance, so... I don't see that they'll do much of anything against us here, but I appreciate my opponent playing it out. We draw into Fallen Ideal, which is another means of buffing our commander as well as giving it evasion, so... Not going to play around too much, I'll put my opponent out of his misery here, I appreciate his patience, we'll just enchant the Lathril. That gives it flying, and we can sack a creature for plus two plus one, which... Is something that we'll sacrifice the elves with. The elf tokens, because they instantly replace themselves, assuming that Lathril gets through. Won't really need to make use of it here because we're just going to pump our army with the Allosaurus Shepherd. The Allosaurus Shepherd makes all our elves base 5-5s, five which hardly any elves ever are, so it's usually always a buff. And then we will turn in sideways against our opponent here. And even if they block here, we should be able to go wide on them at this point. I'm holding back the Marwin the Nurturer, just in case there's something that I'm not thinking of here that will have us not win. We can always just end the turn with a Primal Surge. Okay, managed to knock them down to minus six, so once again, Dracolis, I thank you for playing that one out. We'll get on with another game now, I think. Lathril versus Chandra, Ratadrabic, and Aromi. And a much worse start this time. Uh, that is worth shipping back, I think. Okay, getting to plenty of mana, but none of it is coloured, annoyingly. If we had at least one forest there, then that would be half decent. But unfortunately, there's no guarantee we'll get into a forest on that one, so we'll have to mulligan. Alright, this is looking pretty slow as well, but apparently if we go fast, or at least have a half decent start, then everyone scoops on us anyway, so get rid of the Patriarch's bidding on that. We draw into Miara on turn one. The Mono Red player, after playing Valakut on turn one, it is a Smoldering Crater and a Wayfarer's Bauble on turn 2. And it's a Sack Outlet in Altar of Dementia for us. We're nowhere near caring about that, so... I think we can just go for the Cavern of Souls and we'll play out the Well Wisher to get Summoning Sickness away from that and we'll start gaining bits of life. The Duke of Og going to exile our Fetchland. We're not really all that interested in that. Talisman of Hierarchy from the Orzhov player. Been thinking of going back to Ratadrabic, but I was actually disappointed on the first and only gameplay that I uploaded with this. I thought people would be really excited to see gameplay with Ratadrabic, but they weren't at the time. I wonder if any of you are interested in seeing this again. Wayfarer's Ball will be cracked, and they played down a Valakut Stoneforge. Drawing to another artifact in Swiftfoot Boots this time. So we could hope for a land and get down our commander next turn but we won't be able to equip the Swiftfoot Boots thanks to us not being able to get into the myriad number of mana dorks that are in this deck. I suppose we could draw into the Ancient Tomb, so yeah, let's get down the Swiftfoot Boots here. Wouldn't have thought that the Mono Red player would play a Blood Moon with those lands in play, but we'll get down a Forest anyway just in case. Put Swiftfoot Boots on the Whale Wisher. Arcane Signet for Aromi. And following that up with Deranged Assistant. Phyrexian Arena for Atadrabic. First commander of the game is Chandra Fire of Kaladesh. And then playing a red spell into that with five cards in hand, that is Sardian Avenger. We do manage to get into a land, still can't equip the Swiftfoot Boots unfortunately, but I think we have to try getting down our commander here and just hope that no one wipes the board, or at least removes our commander. I think I forgot to tap down the Well Wisher actually, so if we lose by one point of life then... That will turn out to be a pretty horrible mistake. Some simulacrum for the Demir player, so definitely fixing the colours here. Managed to make an island as well over the past few turns. There is a Crow of Dark Tidings in the bin now, thanks to the Milliken. And now we see an Altar of Dementia from this player as well, so we'll have to be sure not to point ours in this direction. Ratadrabic plays Thought Vessel. And then we see the third commander hit play, Ratadrabic of Urborg. Jeskers will be pointed at the Orzov player, they do control their commander of course, so tapping down to deal the damage and then the Chandra will be untapped. They will get 5 mana thanks to the 5 cards in hand. So with that we see a Chandra Ablaze, a Chandra Flamecaller, 
and a Chandra the Firebrand, so three Chandra Planeswalkers on top of their library. Not sure if that's lucky or not. Now a damage being dealt to us with the Chandra. And uh, they've plumped for Chandra Flamecaller, so so they can wipe the board with this. No doubt they'll transform the Chandra beforehand. We'll take out their own goblin if they decide to do that though. And now the Sardian Avenger swings in towards us. It has been bumped up to a 7-1 with first strike and trample, so obviously not going to block that. So the Planeswalker, the commander, being transformed into a Planeswalker. Uh, Vandal Blast going on to the Altar of Dementia. And that triggered the Sardian Avenger, dealing one damage to that player. Then it is a board wipe from the Chandra Flamecaller, which is exactly what we didn't want to see. So, yeah, we're quite a ways away from Lathril now. And then they targeted us with the tick up on the Chandra Roaring Flame. So we're down to 29. And we do manage to get into a Saw Ring, which means that our Lathriel can come into play pretty quickly. We don't have to worry about the Vandal Blast anymore. Can't get down the Elvish Dreadlord here, unfortunately, so we'll have to plump for the Miara with haste and take out the Chandra Flamecaller. Okay, so managing to take down the Flamecaller, we'll just end the turn with an Altar of Dementia. Would have been much better off holding off on the Lathriel last turn and... Just getting down the Sol Ring and then into our Lathril with the Swiftfoot Boots after a board wipe, but maybe our opponent wouldn't have gone for the board wipe if we didn't have Lathril in play. And we also didn't know that we were drawing into a Sol Ring. Atris, Oracle of Half Truths now. And they target us with the Atris. Alright, so I've got between Ancient Excavation, Demon's Disciple, and Charcoal Diamond. Uh, I think. Which one is going to be the face down pile? Yeah, the top pile is prevented face up according to this, so I think if we show our opponent this while they've got four cards in hand, uh, they're going to wonder what the hell we put here, so I think that's the best way to do it. I'd rather they got rid of that Demon's Disciple to be honest, but unfortunately they do decide to choose it. So uh, Ancient Excavation goes into the bin, and they do have a Disciple and a Rock available to them here, for going the Rock and playing out a Raw Meat of the Dead Tide instead. So Comrade the Grim from the uh, Orzov player, not whether that they do have Vault of the Archangel in play as well. And now a Lightning Greaves also. So that means that this Planeswalker can be dealt with, assuming that they do swing in over there, and they do. Four cards in the mono red player's hand and no Planeswalkers left after a board wipe. We see Reckless Impulse from our opponent, and that allowed them into Volcanic Offering, instead deciding to cast Outpost Siege. I think they got a land from the Reckless Impulse as well. So a land here would be nice so that we can get down our commander. That's a sort of land, Priest of Titania. So against a burn player and two black players, do we just play out our commander and not have Hexproof on it? It's probably not the most intelligent idea. So I suppose we could go Priest of Titania and Elvish Dreadlord. The Priest of Titania will be equipped with the Swiftfoot Boots. Unfortunately, if we see another board wipe, then the Miara isn't going to be able to be paid for here, and then we won't be able to draw the cards. Yeah, not having anywhere near as good a game as the last one. So I'm just going to take a risk here and throw down the Lathril. A Romy being activated here, and that is a Crow of Dark Tidings. They've exiled the Solemn Simulacrum, the Deranged Assistant, and the Ancient Excavation. So then paying the Encore cost for the Crow of Tidings. So they mill two cards three times and then these are going to die at the end of the turn or are they exiled with Encore? I think they get exiled. No, they are actually sacrificed. So yeah, they will get to mill it's six cards first and then at the end of the turn they'll mill six again. And not worthy that Sir Comrade the Grim is in play here. So we're all getting pinged by this. Seeing a bunch of lands, a Milliken. A Consider is in the bin, and a Watcher for tomorrow. And then the Crows attack each one of us, as per the Encore rule. And now unfortunately seeing that Demon's Disciple, which is not good with Encore, we're not going to do a whole lot of anything this game, I don't think. Do at least get to keep our Commander in play this time, but... So Comrade the Grim is going to go down, the Miara doing little to nothing for us. I suppose it does keep our Lathril in play here. Okay, it's not worthy that they have sacrificed one of the crows as opposed to the demon's disciple so as it stands now they're not going to be able to encore that into play so we can now see in the bin a cloud of fairies a corridor monitor black market 
and it's just some lands a Manamo is in the bin. Ayara first of Lockthwain from the black player now. Ayara first of Lockthwain from Ratadrabic. And we go down to 22 with that. And then we see Yeheni, Undying Partisan. And down to two cards in hand, they play out a land tax. Outpost Siege triggering during the upkeep here, because they do want to exile the top card of their library with this, of course, as is usually the case. They exile another Chandra in Chandra Awakened Inferno. So if I was my opponent, I'd probably play out the Chandra and minus down here, although the Yeheni is likely to survive that and get rid of the Chandra, so... Yeah, argument to be made for not doing that, maybe. They do decide to go Chandra Awakened Inferno from the Exile Zone. And yeah, it's three damage to each non-elemental creature. So if we're up against Board White Tribal, we're not likely to do anything in a creature-based deck. Um, not going to sacrifice Lathril to the Altar of Dementia, just in case there's a Stifle effect or something from the Demir player, which I doubt, but it's not worth milling for two. On the off chance that we do actually manage to hold on to our commander potentially. Okay, um, that's not how that should have gone. Ayara sacrificing the Yeheni to draw a card there. Um, this should have sacrificed the Ayara and gained Indestructible. The Yeheni would have become a 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 that could easily take out the Chandra. So, I mean, they've got haste, but yeah, not the right play in my opinion. Okay, finally getting into another land. I think we just need to get out the Priest of Titania here and get that protected as soon as we can. Although we can get rid of the Chandra Awakened Inferno here with the Elvish Dreadlord, so yeah, we're just continuing to go slow and this is the move here, I think, because we can't assume that our opponent is going to be able to get rid of the Chandra. I imagine Ratadrabic can be replayed here quite easily and they do have Lightning Greaves. Maybe could assume that the Ratadrabic is going to come in and take the Chandra out, but I think it's fine to get out the Elvish Dreadlord this turn and make some efficient use of our mana while we're not doing anything else. Argument to be made for us getting down the Draga Warcaller for one mana so that the Priest of Titania taps for more mana next turn, but yeah, I'm still slightly hopeful that we'll be able to get down an army of tokens at some point this game. A raw meat going for exiling a bunch of stuff and targeting the Atris. Now Atris is legendary, so yeah, they can encore the Atris, but they'll only keep one of them. They will still get the triggers from this, of course, so yeah, we'll still be able to get a bunch of cards into hand. They've got six in hand at the moment. I don't suppose they'll mind discarding to hand size. One Atris being pointed at each of us. Kager Tidestar was revealed and they decided to put that in the bin and take the two cards, put them into hand. And then an island being revealed here, so probably just put the island in hand and put the other two in the bin. Uh, and that is what they do. It was just a couple of lands that were revealed to the um, to the red player. And now it is a wonder and a frantic search, so... Revealing Wonder to them is the thing here in the hope that they think that these face down cards are something that we're trying to keep them from putting in the bin. Um, so maybe they put this into hand instead of putting it in the bin. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we can tempt them with a frantic search to look at more cards and discard, but then they can just discard the Wonder anyway to the frantic search. So yeah, we'll try and put the Wonder in their hand and try to also keep them away from a frantic search. And uh, they decided to just put the Wander in the bin and take their frantic search anyway. And yeah, this has them look at more cards, which I'd rather they're not doing, of course. They discard that Evolving Wilds and a Sepulchral Primordium this time. Then casting Maya Triton, milling a land and a Teferi's Veil. Then casting that Charcoal Diamond going down to seven in hand. And the 3-2 swings in at the Azorius player. Source to Plowshares, exiling a Rawmy. At the end of the turn there, surprised that they didn't do that before then. The Aromi player had a hell of a turn there, thanks to the slow source to plowshares. Anyway, land tax triggers at the beginning of the turn. They put the um, triggers on the stack correctly. Phyrexian Arena resolving after the land tax. They go up to five cards with the land tax. Ayari Eternal Pilgrim into play now. And we see a Lysa Shroud of Dusk, which obviously gets a Lightning Greaves onto it. So they definitely could have taken out the Chandra on their turn. Swing it in back at the Demir player, starting to ignore the Burn player over there. Who is down to three cards, but we'll get to see more cards with the enchantments, so 
Maybe shouldn't be ignored. The Maya Triton is going to die here. Although that does have Death Touch, so it will trade with the Lysa. Don't think they remembered the Wanda there, and thanks to them having an island in play, all their creatures are going to have flying, so... Flying and Death Touch, getting rid of the Lysa. Outpost Siege, Exiles and Invoke Calamity. Our opponent decides to cast the Invoke Calamity. So deciding on the Jeska's Will and the Reckless Impulse. So Reckless Impulse, there is a Mountain and a Seasoned Pyromancer. Just deciding to make the mana with the Jeska's Will because they don't control their commander. So seven floating mana at the moment. Casting the Seasoned Pyromancer. Discarding to that yet more Chandras, a Chandra Nalar and an Obsidian Fireheart. So they do get a couple of 1-1 elemental tokens. Then we see the commander enter play once again with four cards left in hand. So it turns out that we would have actually kept our Priest of Titania in play during this turn cycle, assuming that that Swords to Plowshares wouldn't have gone onto it. So seeing a Viridian Shaman can blow up an artifact. I don't think there's any artifacts that we're particularly worried about at the moment, the only thing really being the Lightning Greaves, but I don't think this player's really looking in our direction. So let's go for the Priest of Titania. And we'll attempt to put the swift up boots onto it. That is allowed to land. The burn player was paused there for a second, but decided to let it through. Viridian Shaman is going to be a good means of us buffing our Priest of Titania. Do I want to hurt the Orzov player who could be helping us to get rid of other players though? I think it's just the best thing to do at this point. Don't particularly care about getting rid of the Lightning Greaves here, but... I don't want to throw down the Viridian Shaman later when we're so strapped for mana as it is, trying to get our commander to stick. Now we could attempt to hit the Orzov player and get them to trade the Eilie and therefore trigger this and wipe out the red player's board, but we can do that anyway with Altar of Dementia, so let's just go after the uh, Demir player and we'll try to show the Orzov player that we're not solely um, targeting this guy. Tribute Mage for Aromi. Seeing yet another means of evasive footwear. Lightning Greaves this time for the Aromi player. Yeah, I'd rather I'd rather this Lightning Greaves was blown up by the Viridian Shaman than the Orzov player, but either or's good, I suppose. So now Aromi is going to have protection with the Lightning Greaves. Ratadrabic ramping nicely this game. A Sol Ring now. I've had the curse now, so once that thing dies to the minus three, minus three from our creature then so will all the other creatures and they'll follow suit in dying, assuming that they only have three toughness to begin with. Alright, and there is the Ratadrabic, so whenever another legendary creature you control dies, create a token copy of it. We obviously don't want our opponents to see that, and I want to wipe out this board anyway, so I'm going to Altar of Dementia, point it at the burn player, and we'll do the board wipe now. And that's a really good mill actually. Got rid of a Sol Ring, a land, and Chandra's Regulator is a very good one to get rid of in this deck. Outpost exiles a mountain. And they will start to be able to bolt things with the Valakut now. You would think that would go on the Ratadrabic, which means our removal of their Lightning Greaves is relevant. They could go after our Shaman here so that the Priest of Titania isn't as good. Instead deciding to point the Lightning Bolt at our face. So starting to try to get rid of players as opposed to constantly removing creatures. Then we see Solemn Simulacrum, so we'll see another Lightning Bolt here. Not worthy that I don't think they played this Mountain from Exile here. Once again pointing the Lightning Bolt from the Valakut at us, so we'll go down to 15. They might be able to take us out here, I'm not sure they've got enough mana to do that actually. Then casting Ignite the Future, exiling with that a, a Mana Crypt. See a mountain that was already in there, Blasphemous Act, and a light up the stage. So yep, yeah, going to continue to struggle to have creatures in play. They can play this Blasphemous Act until the end of their next turn, which no doubt they'll just save it for that. So we might as well just pass through our next turn, I imagine. A Deathrite Shaman for us, we might as well just hold on to it, because we're about to see another board wipe. See how much damage the Aromi can do here. Aromi targeting a Watcher for tomorrow, so going for the Encore onto that. It will hide away 4 when it enters, and it does come in tapped. So obviously Aromi not playing into the board wipe either. Playing out Bastion of Remembrance after that, so going to start Aristocrating us down. So Watcher for tomorrow is exiled at the end of the turn. They get the 3 cards into hand with the hideaway, and we're all drained for 3. Psalm Simulacrum from Retodrabic. 
Then another Altar of Dementia. Then deciding to sacrifice the Psalm Simulacrum and mill two with the Altar of Dementia, obviously pointing that at himself. And we see Athreos got a passage as well as a land. Then Ghostly Prison. Okay, and then just scooping. See a Mind Stone exile from the Outpost Siege this time. So of course plays out the Mana Crypt. Then casting the Blasphemous Act as we thought he would. <laughs> Alright, and that's discontinuity from the Demir player, so that's going to end the turn. So we do manage to keep our creatures in play. Glad I didn't sacrifice them in response. <laughs> and there we see a fork, so it's a typical back and forth between a blue and red player. Going to copy the Blasphemous Act here, you would think. And yep, yeah, so the board does get wiped. Unless there's a free counter spell here, I'll just assume that there isn't and point some mill at the red player. Managed to mill a Roiling Earthquake and a Brotherhood's End as well as a land. So that puts Bastion of Remembrance on the stack twice, Solemn Simulacrum as well. And it's at turn 10. It doesn't feel like anything's really happened this game, unfortunately. But it's a nice contrast to the previous game, I suppose. So we'll continue to do with Lathriel what we've done all game and play it out without Swiftfoot Boots protection. A Romy into play once again with Lightning Greaves in tow. And they will be able to encore something. Not worthy with one less player, they will have um, one less creature come into play with the Encore. Ugh, and there we see Playcrafter, so Lathriel being dealt with again. We could maybe play this out long enough to eventually have the mana to play a Primal Surge and win that way, but even then, like I said in the previous game, it's um, still pretty random for us because we could reveal an instant or sorcery that stops our chaining of just getting down a bunch of stuff into play, which is by design. But that does rely on us having more mana than this and actually drawing into the Primal Surge. Romy swings in at Chandra. Season Pyromancer at the end of the turn being exiled, making a couple of elemental tokens. I'm hoping that the red player is looking to knock us out of the game sometime soon. Exiling off the top a Ruby Medallion at the beginning of the turn. Playing the Medallion. And flashing back, Ignite the Future. So exiling with that, that's pretty unlucky. Liquid Metal Talk and a couple of Mountains. So playing out the Liquid Metal Talk for free. Then playing one of the Mountains into the Valakut and ignoring us this time, leaving us at 9 life. And then the Elementals swinging in over there as well. I think if I was the Chandra player I'd be focusing on the Elf player myself. Because um, yeah, they could have dealt 5 damage to us here and had us down to 4. Better getting rid of a player while you can. Okay, a Skull Clamp makes me glad that I held on to the Draga Warcaller all this time, so... Um, likely going to get out the Deathrite Shaman so that we can exile something in response in Arami's bin. But let's play out the Draga Warcaller for now. And then we'll play down the Skull Clamp and throw it on the Warcaller. That obviously has us draw two cards, which allows us into another land. A Fallen Ideal would be good if we could actually stick our commander for more than two seconds. Uh, yeah, so not particularly good draws there. We will play out the Deathrite Shaman. Could look at encoring this and then putting a Skull Clamp on one of them. But well, not too worried about that for now. I'm just hoping to lose this game sometime soon, to be honest. So we'll go for Swiftfoot Boots onto the Shaman and then we will put the Skull Clamp on there as well. We can draw off this if we want to by sacrificing it to the Altar of Dementia. It does have two toughness, so it doesn't die to the Skull Clamp immediately. And now, like I said, we're just holding up the black ability on this, or actually it's the green ability to exile a creature from a graveyard. And we'll do that in response to whatever they target with the Aromi. Thought Scour in response, doing some self-mill and drawing a card. Seeing a Tormod the Desecrator and a Ravenous Chupacabra in the bin from that. Alright, so they might be baiting us here. They're going after the Cloud of Fairies to untap some lands and gain some mana. Um... They might have some means of reanimation in their hand, so we'll let them have the Cloud of Fairies. Don't know if this is some kind of combo that I'm missing, but I don't care if I end up losing to a combo here. So tapping down four mana, and they will encore the Fairies, and obviously untap their lands there. Then cycling with Vizier of Tumbling Sands. And when you cycle it, untap a target permanent, and they targeted their... Cloud of Fairies with that, I dare say that that's meant for their commander, which does have Shroud, so they could have waited on that. Wall of Lost Thoughts now. And they will mill four cards, they've got 42 cards left in the library right now. Seeing in the bin, Ransack the Lab, a Windfall, Embalmer's Tools, and a Signet. 
And now they are hard casting a Grey Merchant of Asphodel. That puts us ever closer to losing here. So we would have gone down there had the Chandra have dealt that 5 damage to us previously. We would have gone down to the Grey Merchant. They might be keeping us in play to try and help against the Demir player, but looks like it's a Romy's to win here. Luckily they don't have a sack outlet at the moment. There is a Dread Return, so what are they looking to grab back here? That is the Plague Crafter, so obviously we'll exile the Plague Crafter here. Pulls double duty, we gain two life and don't allow them to reanimate that thing. And then we'll go down to six again and crack that wooded foothills so I can just start F6ing. Then flashing back the Dread Return, we get drained for three and they'll be able to animate something else. It is the Demon's Disciple this time, which we saw earlier on. So we're going to draw two cards to the Skull Clamp here. And we will get drained for one as well. Draw two to the Skull Clamp first though. And there we see a Viridian Zealot. And looks like we're finally going to be finished off here. So uh, being too hasty and getting rid of the Lightning Greaves on the middle player's side of the field. Uh, the Lightning Greaves going to be the end of us here. But like I said, the red player could take us out whenever he wants. Thanks to the Valor Cut, we've been controlled nicely by all of our opponents. Oh, okay. Not taking us out with the Demon's Disciple. Yeah, for an elf deck, we've not done very well at all on the board here, but there have been lots of board wipes this game. So if the Elemental decides to deal some damage to us here, we actually can't play the Viridian Zealot and sacrifice it to blow this thing up and draw some cards. Couple of Mountains in Exile again, off the top of the library from the red player. So not getting the best draws in the end game. Dictate of the Twin Gods being cast at sorcery speed. So that's double damage. And then we see another Mountain into the Valor Cup being played from Exile and we are being ignored. Uh, that is in the hope that we help against the Demir player, I imagine. And then, yeah, the Elemental goes in at the Demir player as well, so we will sit at two. Obviously, they could have taken us out with this, because it will deal two damage and not one. Chain Reaction, three creatures on the battlefield, so that is six damage to everything. And unfortunately, we won't get to see what we were going to draw into. Bastion of Remembrance will trigger twice and get rid of us. Throwing down an Agent of Treachery. They decide to steal the commander which they played last turn, throw the lightning greaves on that and they did just deal some damage to our opponent, knocks them down to 7. And then lightning greaves onto the agent of treachery, it's just a matter of time now before the red player goes down I imagine. Don't imagine they can deal 38 damage even with double damage dealers, although they do have a lot of mana. Hedron crab being played after that and a mind stone. Okay and someone scoop there I assume, it's the... Red player there, uh, they went down to minus three, did they just point a burn spell at themselves? Oh, they lost the flip to the mana crypt, I thought this was just red things. If a source deals damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage instead. <laughs> so, they took six to their own mana crypt, yeah, probably best not putting mana crypt or mana vault in here if you're going to run the dictate of the twin gods, because it does count on you as well, apparently. So there we are, Aromi wins this one. Got one interesting game with Lathril at least, but hopefully you enjoyed this second video as well. Huge thank you to the patrons as ever for supporting the channel. You can do that yourself via the link in the description below if you would like. Thank you if you do decide to do that. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.